questions. Um, I do want to introduce our next speaker. Um, the, uh, we had a late change in the program, and so uh, we'll have uh, with us now JJ Zhang. Hope I got that correct. Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, she's a Los Angeles based data analytics and visualization expert employed with Cambridge Systematics. In the past two years, she and her team have focused on harnessing big data to generate cutting edge and practical solutions to support transit market research and travel demand modeling projects. She's been heavily involved in the development of LA Metro's award-winning customer evaluation and performance measure toolkit, which has been used primarily for their next-gen bus restructuring study. This innovative approach in structuring transit system design is also being adopted by Boston's MBTA, Denver's RTD, and NCTD in San Diego. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Jiaji Zhang with Cambridge Systematics. So as Matt mentioned here today, I'm going to show you some of the work we did with the MHO to utilize and visualize different types of data to help support transit market analysis. And here are the three main data sources that is used to, um, to um, boost this dashboard that we're, I'm going to show you a bit later. So the first one is location-based um, service data, which is collect, uh, collected passively by your cell phone. And by, um, according to the Pew study, 96% uh, of the Americans has a cell phone of some kind. I don't know about you guys, but my cell phone knows exactly where I'm going, where I'm go uh, when I'm going, and, and what type of place I'm going. So with that penetration, we have a much larger size of data that can imply the total demand and travel patterns. So together with the AOMHO, we also um, stitch these two data sets together um, from the transit data sets that MHO has from their tap fare card data that we can build a transit usage patterns from. We also introduced a new type of data, which is the routing data, that helps to measure relative auto and transit travel times, which we'll talk more a bit later. So, the most challenging part of these three data sets are the LBS data. As mentioned, it has a very large size um, and also has very precise spatial precise precision, which means we're dealing with billions of rows of records for the nation. And for LA County, in this case, we started with hundreds of millions of rows of location data from 8 million devices over six month period of time. So as you can see, there's not much we can do without effective visualization and measurements. And I want to mention here what's special about the LBS data used here is that it is, uh, we call it the locus LBS data. It is developed in-house in Cambridge Systematics, um, from which we, have, we develop all the algorithms from scratch that gives us confidence in terms of what the data tells us, and also allows us to to analyze routing information for each trip records, which is very crucial for this study. And what LBS data can be used for transit agencies? Take LMH as example. We have developed and visualized OD trip table pattern and trip tables for the modeling team. And we also geofenced around rail stations to segment um, rider and non-riders to help uh, advertising campaign uh, efforts. And the biggest efforts is what we are talking about today, which is the transit market research uh, we did for the next gen bus restructuring. And together with AOMHO, my team um, worked really hard to get for tremendous efforts to come up with uh, somehow new measurements for transit performance, which we call the transit competitiveness. It takes into consideration of the transit uh, travel markets that we get from the tab da field card database, and also the total travel demand, which can be explained by the LBS data. Together, this, with these two data sets, we can have a transit market share for each sub-regions. And with that, we route each transit and auto trip through uh, transit planners and auto planners to give a competitive uh, driving time versus auto time. And this graphic shows you um, more specifically how each trip is routed from different engines to get a ratio of auto uh, of transit time uh, over uh, auto time. With what we see from the region is that this graphic shows us that wind driving is over twice as fast um, compared to transit. Transit is less competitive. As you can see here, when transit time is twice as auto, um, the market share drops under 2%. With that in mind, 
we divided the markets of the region into two main um, uh, type of markets based on the market share as well as the uh, auto and transit travel time ratio. We call it the competitiveness. And here, um, I'm going to show you. A so for this study, we developed different type of dashboards to uh, um, to the small geographies like tracts to help with route planning as well as larger aggregate geographies so that we can imply privacy concerns for the LBS data as well as um, to have sufficient information to support um, transit routing planning. So let me show you this. Here I'm going to show you today is the how it works. Is the subregion uh, dashboard. As you can see here, I already said the origin as LA downtown, which is like everyone's familiar with. On the top uh, middle corner, um, the transit profile shows us the size of the market. The total market has uh, now surprisingly over half a million trips uh, coming from downtown area. And also, um, for actually, let me set this to a smaller one. So this only shows you the top markets that has a certain number of trips coming from each uh, uh, each OD pairs. So here uh, we see over a hundred thousand uh, trips, uh, transit trips, which is are over fifteen percent of sh market share, um, which means downtown is actually one of the best markets Metro is uh, serving. Not surprisingly, most of these markets are very close to downtown and is covered by good metro service like the rail and the, the subway of red line and purple line. But what is interesting is here that which means even transit is very slow compared to auto, people are still taking transit. The main reason probably is people don't have other options other than transit. For example, this one is highlighted on the, on the destination uh, map. This is the south of, uh, of LA, which is the low income community. And also when you look at other areas, they are kind of like close to downtown where parking is very limited, but also people live a more carless lifestyle. With that said, we have a good understanding of the market and we know that if Metro um, keep invest or retain good service, improve the service for these markets, they can easily attract the people who have transit as their primary mode to take transit more often. And on the right side, um, these different types of performance measures help um, transit planners, routing service planners to understand where and when they should invest more or adjust the transit services. Um, the graphic on the left shows you the overall time of day travel, pad, uh, travel um, distributions. You see most of the travel in downtown LA started um, from um, AM and PM peaks, and a lot of the travel uh, also happens in the midday. However, on the right side, which shows you the transit distribution of time of day, that we see Metro is doing well with the peak AM and PM peak. However, the midday, we're losing some of the transit. In that way, the planners can go into that and take a look into like, maybe we can increase the frequency during midday to attract more people and serve more um, the bigger markets. Um, I hope I have a little bit more time to uh, dive into a different market. And uh, okay, that is perfect. So I hope I can see it here. It's a little hard to see, sorry. Let me just do it here. Okay, so let's look at a different market that is very different from downtown, um, Pasadena. It is a rich market. It is 15 minutes drive away from downtown LA without traffic, but during the peak hour, it can be 40 to an hour. So for this market, what is interesting is you see, it has a lot of going on. You can see this still generates over half million trips uh, from this region. However, only 2% of them are taking transit because when we move on to the transit competitiveness graph here, we see a lot of those markets falls into the type of markets where transit is, we don't have good transit connectivities or transit times is 
over four times compared to auto. So people have a car in this community and transit performance is not very good. But when we look at the two markets that have a higher um, share, we see one of them is downtown where the job markets are. And this one is Azusa, where is the end of gold line. So most of the people in Pasadena is taking the gold line that connects Pasadena with downtown and also to the east of LA. So this is the area that we can see, like we can improve transit segments and to improve um, transit um, services during peak time, for example, to attract more be more commuters. And for like other areas, we can even take a look at and you can see here the average travel time ratio for this region is above twice or even three times um, compared to auto. So with this dashboard, we can help, LA, like L Metro can use it to identify markets that like downtown, they want to invest more and retain services to attract more riders. And for areas like uh, more like rural areas, they can identify areas maybe have a potential markets that they can switch some of the fixed lanes to other alternatives in order to release some of the resources in for other lanes. And we have another dashboard in to, uh, on to, as a second layer. Once you, div, uh, you identify the submarkets that you're interested in to anal analyze, you can look into more smaller geographies to see each routing and the markets it represents. That's all I have for today. And if you're interested in the dashboard and different showcases, we have an interactive poster session tomorrow morning. And we, um, I'm also happy to answer any questions after this, uh, this discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have time. Oh, there's a. There's okay. We do have time for one quick question here while the next presenter is coming up to. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I didn't get there. You're using yesterday a measure of the views that you got in the phones, or you are doing some transformation of that data? So, so when you get a market share, a transit market share, you need to know how many people are taking transit, which are coming from the metro's tab card information, right? And the total travel demand comes to your phone because most of us use our phone and our phones collect our data. So we have access to a cell phone data, which is called LBS. No, no, but my question yes. is if you're using just that raw data or you're using We have the raw data. We don't, expansion or something? Yes, we didn't get into uh, the details of that because of the time limit. We'll basically show more about the visualization, but uh, I will be happy to discuss the methodologies behind this, the sample sizes and the algorithms and the expansion methodologies. Yeah, but everything is done in the house, in my opinion, the brilliant team in my group, uh, in my company, and uh, we have great confidence in terms of the data tells us. Okay,